So you've seen a get rich quick course. You know it's a get rich quick course. You know the person involved selling it is a bit of a shady character who's selling you hopes and dreams. So you don't hand your money over, right? Well, even though our guest this week knows all that, he's invested thousands in these courses. And this week we're going to find out what happens next after you've signed up. Welcome to the Property Podcast, where every Thursday, property investors come together to be informed and inspired. This week, we've got the second part of our brilliant conversation with Mike Burnett. So if you've been tempted to lay down thousands of pounds for a course that's going to make you rich, and you're thinking, well, maybe there is something to this. Maybe the marketing's a bit full on, but maybe there's loads of value in there. Well, you don't have to, because Mike's already done it. And make sure you stick around to the end, because we've got another brilliant video recommendation for you as well. So it's time for our favourite part of the show, the confirmation bias section, or as we like to call it, the new story of the week. (laughs) Rob, this week, conveniently, we've picked a story that backs up something that we've been saying for a little while. Yes, thank you, Property Wire, for publishing a story with the headline, Property Investment Surge Could Come After Brexit, New Poll Suggests. This is something that we've been saying for a long time that we anticipate happening, and there's now some data from a survey to back up this view. 55% of people, according to this, have paused their investment plans over the last six months as they await the outcome of Brexit. 60% are waiting for the budget before pressing on, and 37% have taken a property off the market because of a slowdown in activity. So if you put all this together, you've basically got a large number of people who would otherwise have been transacting in some way, they would have been buying or selling, who haven't been doing that for the last six months at least, while they wait to see what happens. And I was speaking to someone the other day who said that he was saying the same thing with businesses. After some initial stockpiling, there's been six months of activity when they normally would have been investing and doing various things, and they haven't. So when we do get a resolution, all those six months of activity will happen all at once and things will really kick on. And it seems likely, Rob, even though the mainstream media would have you believe otherwise, that the same thing will happen in property. Absolutely. And that's again reflected in this survey. 51% of respondents said they believe there'll be a surge in activity after October 31st, with only 31% thinking the market will go in a negative direction. And with so many people holding back right now, I I think there's a couple of things to consider here. I believe now is a fantastic opportunity with so many people sitting on the fence, because if you can find people who want to sell, and that's not so easy right now, because there's a lot of people taking their stock off the market. But those who are left in, those who are trying to move their stuff on, there's opportunity, there's deals to be done. The deals that I put together in the background with Property Hub Invest, they're not coming along every week but when they come along they're strong because of the economic uncertainty we have that leverage at the moment so for me i think right now although there's there's not there's not much of october left is a great opportunity if you can find it to invest afterwards though i think it's an absolute no-brainer that maybe after an initial few months of uncertainty and possibly even dip into a very small recession we'll then go into a a huge cycle of growth which is very much reflected in the 18-year property cycle something we've talked about a lot you can find more information on the 18-year property cycle by searching through our website or even on google you'll see our stuff come up there as well the podcast we've done loads on the 18-year property cycle make sure you understand it because it's really powerful I think finally, that if we assume, and I don't want to say it's a certainty, but if we assume that Boris is still in power after Brexit is delivered, and it's not a certainty, but let's say he is, he will be very motivated to make whatever outcome is delivered look successful. So not only have you got this pent up demand, but you're also going to have a lot of stimulus into the market as well through the government. So that will be a lot of infrastructure projects, a lot of investment, possibly some tax cuts, all designed to stimulate the market over the short to medium term to make himself look good. That doesn't make him a bad person. That's pretty much what all politicians do. But again, all these things combined and the 18-year property cycle all do point to a surge is on the horizon. So we'll see. Not long left to find out. And if we're wrong, we can just conveniently forget this segment. This week, you're in for a treat because we're bringing you the second part of our interview with Mike Winnett. If you haven't listened to last week's episode yet, go do it, get all the background. But the gist is, Mike sold his business for a tidy sum of money and decided to use the proceeds to embark on a quest. He decided to click on all those adverts that you see on your social media and on YouTube 
promising you a formula to get rich quick to see if you actually can. Yeah, so the conversation heads into what happens after you've handed your cash over, which I think is really interesting. And also, I found really interesting Mike's view on mentors. So he talks about that as well. There's so much good stuff in here. And that's because Mike is spending his money on these things. So you don't have to. He's giving you the results, the outcomes. So let's get to it. Here's part two of the Mike Winnett interview. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt for just a second and say like their, their products that they're signing you up for are so amazing mm-hmm. that they feel like they have to use every trick in the book to get you to buy them because they just want everyone to be able to change their lives. You've actually seen the products now. So yeah. what's it actually like when, you, when you've when you sort of given over your credit card details, you actually start to apply this <laughs> stuff? So, what's it like? Uh, yeah, like some of the business plans they're giving you out and this is going to be the formula that's going to accelerate your business to be five, six, seven, ten million. Uh, very similar to the ones that were in my GCSE business uh, business studies book. Like you can just go and download a template. You know, um, say on some of the property courses, some of the some of the things that they're explaining to you, it's like, oh, when we say it's not your money, you have to go and convince other people to give you their money. It's like, so really, you've just told me to do what you're doing, basically, and that's how this whole thing works. So it's just value of the product isn't very good. Ultimately, what they're trying to do is upsell you into some form of mentorship. And don't get me wrong say property is the perfect example, I do believe if you had a property mentor that genuinely is going to help you, you will probably be more successful in property than if you just read a a book or watch a YouTube video. I I do believe that. I just think maybe they're not worth the amounts that these people are promising you. And if you've not done all the first bits first, if you've not done the free researchers out there, join communities online, join some of the forums and done some of the basic stuff don't go drop in six, ten, twelve grand on a on a mentor when you don't even understand what yield means. Or yeah, absolutely. I mean, and also people think you have to pay for a mentor, no. and it has to be an official thing. But you can just go to meetups, meet more knowledgeable people, people who are further on than you, and ask them questions because. In these industries, people like it when they're asked about their expertise because then they can be an expert and go, oh, well, it's great that you're interested in property or HMOs or whatever else. I've done this or try that or speak to this person. Yeah. And in a way, they're mentoring you. But it's cost you a, a few minutes of your time and being friendly and polite rather than a grand every month. Yeah, it's interesting. I've got, and I had the conversation this week actually with someone about mentoring. I've got two mentors. I don't know how I would feel about paying someone to be my mentor because that makes me think, what are their intentions in reality? And don't get me wrong, some of them do work. I imagine they do work. I'd do it in the gym. If there was someone that was in good shape and they said, if you do this training plan and eat this, because in my mind, it's that is a formula to follow. But when it's something, say property, there's so many variables there's so many variables that you can't learn in a course or but with the mentor thing I do not pay for these mentors they are people that have took interest in me from being young I used to work for one of them one of them's a friend I've got in business as well they are basically a soundboard to my ideas the most I pay them is I'll pay for our meal when we go out to talk and I'll see them maybe once every three months tell them what I'm thinking tell them what I'm up to and they will tell me either I'm an idiot and it's a stupid idea or it's a good idea and they support me and then I go and take that and do whatever I want with it. One of them in particular doesn't like any of this Mike Winnett stuff. He just thinks, stop with all this entrepreneur stuff, get back to doing a proper business because that's what you're good at. But I just feel there's something in this. But that's, I don't think I'd pay for a mentor, especially one. And think about this logically now. If there's a thousand of you in this room and they're signing 70 of you up to be a mentor, what kind of personal mentorship can they actually give you? What's going to happen is you'll be backhanded to somebody else that probably has just as much property experiences you've got maybe one one page ahead in the textbook i don't think you're actually getting value for what's what that you're sold in those events and that and that's personal opinion other people might think differently well that's the thing with these all these things that they offer if you're out of that room and you have time to think about it take your time get, let the emotion run out of you you start to think well actually i'm probably not going to become financially free in a few weeks because that's absurd and I can probably can find a mentor that way or this big claim might not be true let me do a bit more research or I can find a different way to learn and you can actually if you give yourself time and and, and thinking space to go oh yeah most of this is probably nonsense the problem is or the problem for the people who go to these courses or these events is that they don't have that time yeah. because the 
they're forced to make a decision there and then and made to feel bad if they don't make a decision yeah. there and then. Yeah, they even like playing on your family, don't they? Like, you know, your family, what the decision you're going to make, you know, this is your, what you do for your kids' future and all that kind of stuff. And you're in that room, you really think that there is only 20 of these left and you are going to let your family down if you don't do this. And this is the first step to you being. So, yeah, you, you've hit the nail on the head there. If we assume now that this product that you're buying for whatever it is ending in a seven isn't yeah. going to be the magical secret. The message that you get from all the people on Instagram and everything else is like, any, you can do anything you want. Anyone can achieve yeah. anything. Is that true? Or are some people just not cut out for having these amazing lives? Uh, I think there's certain people are going to be more successful at certain things. But I would honestly suggest, and I might be wrong, if you are looking for the answer in one of these things, you are probably not cut out to achieve that very thing that you're looking for, in my mind. I say this often, if you look at the world's wealthiest people and the world's biggest businesses, they're doing something unique or they're improving an already existing product or or in an existing established sector. So they're improving something. If you're thinking you're going to become financially free or a millionaire or a billionaire in 60 days or whatever it is, or a week, and you're in a room with a thousand other people, take property as an example. So you're at the Wolverhampton, you know, or... Birmingham or Newcastle no money down seminar and this guy's on stage telling you he makes thousands and thousands and thousands from doing these deals in your local area why on earth is he now equipping a thousand people in his own community to find the deals that he finds himself buys the properties that he claims he buys himself and become his competitors it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense to me so yeah I think for them to work you need to be looking at something where you're going to be the only person doing this thing or you need to find something or improve something that's already out there. Now, if you're following a 10-step a guide to do something, you're not improving on the process. You're doing exactly what everybody else is doing. That's what we did in our old business. We specifically looked for a niche that we thought was underserviced and providing customers with a real alternative. And that was in terms of the product, the price, how it worked. That's how I became successful financially. And that wasn't easy. Just that part, took months and months and months of research to find a sector that this product could possibly work in and all that kind of stuff. You know, I could be on stage now telling you how to become financially free in online training, but the truth is the market conditions were so different back then. None of that stuff's really relevant now. You're in that in property, look how one legislation change and it all changes, doesn't it? So, um, yeah, so I think you need to find something unique, have a real unique proposition, find a sector that's undervalued, backwards plan. You need to look at who you're going to target, not trying to copy a, a, a printed off, you know, step by step guide from the internet that won't work. Even if you came up with your next idea, you do it. You come up, with, you put the same thought into it as you did the last one, and it's an absolute winner. It's a great idea, yeah. and you gave that idea to ten people. They wouldn't all be successful doing it. Like maybe none of them would be successful yeah. doing it because the idea is very, very important. There's also the execution piece, yeah. and the execution is really hard. Yeah, really hard. And that's the bit that never really gets emphasised at any point. It's, it, all, it seems to be all about the idea or the, the industry or whatever. Yeah. No one ever talks about actually having to do it. Definitely in the marketing. You know, it's like, oh, well, look, here are some people that I've made financially free in the last week, but none of them have gone, actually, it was a lot harder than a thirst for from the court. They're like, yes, everything you told me on the court, like, on the course came true. As if they're reading the script, but... Yeah, it is so hard work, and I don't think people are, are, are willing to do that. If you're looking for a course that's claiming you can get these results for four hours a week, you're not really cut out to do that. Are you willing to really work six, seven days a week for 10, 12, 14, 16 hour days, some days, and not pay yourself on the off chance that in 12 months, two years, three years? And I think most people don't want to do that, especially if you buy one of them courses you don't want to. Yeah, because on these courses, if it is achievable and they say in property they might go rent to rent and you can get an income of £50,000 a year by following this strategy. Now, in theory, you probably can, through rent to rent, make fifty grand a year at some point in the future if you work really hard, you've got a bit of talent, you can think creatively, and go out week in, week out, put the effort in and do it, almost like a full-time job, and eventually you might get to that 50 grand a year and then you've got to maintain it. It can be done. But what they don't say is, you've got to do all this. Yeah. What they say is, you can make 50 grand by doing passive, this. Passive, passive yeah. as well. That's the thing. Pa- what passive income basically means is, you're an IT technician now, you're an IT guy for a big blue chip company and you earn 90 grand a year. 
you can replace your income through passive income with property. Now, what it means is the hours that you put into that job, you need to put that and more into property to earn 90000 And I don't think people are aware of that. Mm-hmm. I think passive income is a myth in many ways because there's nothing passive about it. And you'll know this from properties. I know this from properties. I've got, um, through the Entrepreneur Forum, uh, the series that we're doing, we ended up buying one in Spain. And we've got a few in the UK. But I've been over to Spain now six times this year. I've had burst water pipes. I've refurbed it twice. The pool's flooded. The electrics have gone. There's been nothing passive about that. Any profit I was expecting to make in the first six months, as told by the guys selling me Spanish property, you know, make four times as much money as you can in the UK. I spent four times as much money as I would in the UK just going over there, sorting stuff out, getting it repainted, replastered, all the electrics done. So there's been nothing passive about it. It's been an absolute nightmare. But none of, no one's telling you that bit when they're selling you these, you know, these these kind of things. So there's not necessarily anything wrong with making money non passively. Like a lot of the property stuff is like you yeah. it's clearly not passive income. Yeah. But if you're replacing a job that you really don't like mm-hmm. with a job that you actually prefer and you prefer working really hard in property, then that's yeah. totally fine. Yeah, yeah. But that's not the message that you ever get. It's always about mm-hmm. passive and may and even maybe that can get passive at some point if you get to the scale where you can support a team. Yeah. And you can Turn it into from a job into a business, yeah. But it's never packaged as another as a job. No, no. no. That by the way, you have to do it at the same time as your actual job. Yeah, for quite never a long is. Time. But, but you know why it's not that? Because and just some of the stuff that we've talked about here, talking about business, sometimes it scares people, it overwhelms people when you start talking about management accounts and accountants and bookkeeping and HMRC and all this type of stuff. That would scare Joe Blogs off or like Joe Public off. So to say that anyone can become financially free in 90 days, that appeals to everybody. And I think that's why they're marketed in such a way. But yeah, if you've got a job that you hate and you've got a genuine interest in property and you're willing to do some of the research, start it off as a side thing first. And then eventually when you start getting the, the monthly revenue coming in, quit your job and then do it full time and then go to these things. And then if you need a mentor, there's loads of things you can join like communities, hubs and all that kind of stuff. You're going to get more information from them first that will help you. You'll make the right connections because that's mostly what property is, isn't it? It's not knowing the right people and that mortgage provider can provide me with that and that accountant can help me do this and do I need to set up a limited company, all those types of things. Then do it as your full-time job. But if you're not, you're not going to just sort of do this and replace your income in two hours a week or three hours a week, not at all, no. And while I've been this, vulnerable people go there as well. There are people who you could call lazy as well who go to them who think well if I pay 300 quid it's just going to happen whereas actually those people they're not the ones prepared to go searching for the information on the internet Mm -hmm. read every blog available and and speak to people go to networking meetings visit the areas they're interested to to work in and put that effort in because actually all the information that is taught out there with with a price attached to it the vast majority if not all of it is available for free. Yeah. And mentoring can be free. Yeah. So why are you paying? Yeah, there's not much more in that paid stuff than you that is free. In fact, if anything, they're just regurgitating the stuff that they've got from forums and other bits. It's all just recycled rubbish, isn't it? Let, let's be honest. A lot of it is. Um, but people want to be spoon-fed. So people will pay a premium to be spoon-fed stuff, you know. So I always think this. If you have done some of the research anyway and you kind of know a little bit about property and you've got 20 grand to pay for a mentor... I found personally my biggest teacher was experience actually doing something. If you went and kind of found it, not even the best deal in the world, or even if it was below market value by say three grand, four grand, five grand, and you went through the process of getting a buy to let mortgage and buying that property, in the boring way, some might say, you know, you actually put all your money into one property and you put 20% down, you will learn more from that experience. And if it all goes wrong, you still got that property that you could sell to somebody else. So you give a mentor £20,000, you're not getting that £20,000, regardless of whether you're going to invest in property or not. That twenty grand is gone. Go and invest that twenty grand in a, a, a repossessed flat or, go, or even a, a, a terrace house. Buy one that doesn't even need doing up. Worst case scenario, just hold on to that for a year. You've learned so much more real experience in that year of, oh, I've not paid my ground rent there you know it's leasehold it's freehold all these things through experience and you can sell it if it's not for you and you've still got your money back and and that would be my advice I learned property through experience and then went and plugged the holes with ah 
he's mentioned something there that sounds a better way or a, a more streamlined way of doing things. I'm going to find out what that guy knows. YouTube videos, books, that's like I said about your book. I was doing property with absolutely no strategy. Um, now I've got eight properties. I've done that with all through just seeing other people do it and just copying what I think was right and putting a little bit of money in that where I knew if it all went wrong, sell the property. You can't really lose in property if you do it that way, I think, because you either gain experience, knowledge, or you, you, one of them might do well. You just build on that experience and knowledge, I think. I'm so glad you said that because we say that on the podcast all the time that the real learning is the doing. Even we podcast and we say, hopefully you love all the information we put out there and we'll carry on doing it because we really enjoy this. But actually the real learning won't be downloading another podcast. It'll be when you take action and yeah. start actually doing the thing you want to do. That is when the learning happens. I say that and that's the same with business as well. You can watch any of these gurus for hours and hours and hours and read all their books but ultimately you have to stop, turn it off and do it. Like you've got to do it and that's where you, the real learning actually happens. And that was the same with the online training business. We used to say, e-learning is rubbish as a way for training people. It's good for giving people ideas and introducing concepts. Real learning happens on the job. The best learning in work, in life, is through experience. Not from some flashy guy sat on a Lambo shouting at you from the YouTube ads telling you, do this, six steps, you can become... That's all You've got to just go and do the thing. Like You might as well just go and try affiliate marketing yourself rather than paying someone 12 grand to tell you how to do affiliate marketing. There's so much free stuff out there telling you to do it. Property, if you've got 20 grand now to go get a mentor, don't. Go and find now on Rightmove a property that's reasonably priced. Speak to an estate agent and find out what the rent per month is. Just go and get a buy to let mortgage. Like, that would be my way of learning property, if it was me. I think you hit a really important distinction that I think is worth emphasising. It's like you, the time to get mentoring or to pay for something is when you've gone as far as you possibly can on yeah. your own and you've, you've done enough to know what it's all about. And they go, okay, well, there's this gap that I need to plug. There's someone else's knowledge that I need now. And if you have to pay for it, maybe you do, but maybe you can find another way. But the time to do that in, in, in property or in anything else is not right at the start. If you go into something about affiliate marketing and you've never even heard of affiliate marketing before you walk through the door and now someone is telling you that's what you need to do, you don't pay for a course at that point because all the information that you get is all the stuff that you could have got for free Yeah, because it's all out there. But it's, if you've done it and it's going, like, okay, well, now I need help from someone to help me take it from this level to this level, fair enough. That's, um, we, I was speaking to a guy and he does mentoring and weirdly, and this is the difference between a good mentor and a bad mentor, he only mentors four people at any one time because he said, I can't give a service to people that I would feel proud of and I can't really help their business. And he actually said, I don't understand how people can have... Uh, could mentor a thousand people from a, a room you just couldn't physically do it but he actually said he refuses to mentor people in business unless they've got to a certain stage unless they've got staff unless they've got a bookkeeper unless they've almost been through the grind first and he knows they're really serious about it he said if there is a brand new startup or they're a solo opener whatever you want to call them and they wanted him to help he would say no because he doesn't even know if you've got it in you to go they almost need to reach the end of their ability before he can then talk strategy and streamlining and making it better we could do or I could do with a property mentor now in reality because I know that I'm not the most efficient I know I've got equity and properties that could be recycled and put elsewhere and I know that I'm not getting the best price I know I'm paying over the odds in certain different areas I would go and look for a mentor now to show me almost look at my portfolio and say that you can do this this and this and you can be more tax efficient or you can do this this and this and you could purchase another property or you can get on better mortgage rates and all that kind of stuff i wouldn't have wanted a mentor at the very beginning i've almost had to go through the mill to realize that actually i'm probably not doing this in the best way now and now i need extra help rob this is the type of interview that while it is fantastic and the stuff that mike has shared is incredible Part of you is like, wow, and, and the other part of you is angry. Because although we kind of knew a lot of this already, just saying it out loud just makes your skin crawl. Yeah, it's pretty shocking and depressing stuff. And I thought that I had a pretty good grasp on how these things worked, but there were things that Mike talked about that did actually shock me. And I love the fact that Mike is doing what he's doing, and he's embarked on this quest, because he is 
stopping people from being taken advantage of. And that is, I think, what's happening. People are being taken advantage of. Everyone wants to have a better life. Everyone's looking for a shortcut, if there is one. Everyone wants to believe that there's some secret where if they're let in on it, everything will be great, everything will be easy. And it's very easy to suspend your disbelief in those circumstances. So it's great that there's now someone saying, look, I've done all these things. I've tried my best. I've done what I was told to do. And here's what happened. And hopefully for Mike's case, they won't all fail because he's got a lot of money riding on this. He has. But unfortunately, I think we all know the answer that the majority of them, if not all of them, will fail or not live up to the promises that have been made. And that's the thing that gets me here is the promises and the dreams that are sold and that's happening to people's emotions. And a lot of these courses, and certainly the selling of these courses, are a complete manipulation of you as an individual. If you've not been to one of these sales sessions before, you may be forgiven for thinking, yeah, but I'm not stupid, I wouldn't fall for this. But we've said it already. There are plenty of smart people, very smart people, who've handed their money over to these people. Because... You want to believe what they're saying is true. But actually beyond that, the way they position their courses in those intense environments is that if you don't go ahead, you're actually stupid. These people selling the courses aren't just good at sales and marketing. They're master manipulators who've been taught how to do it. And that's why they all do very similar things. There's a process to it, as Mike's alluded to. I'm sure when they go to sleep at night, they convince themselves that what they're doing is right. And if they manipulate you, it's fine because their end product is good. But actually, as Mike's discovering, the end product isn't that good. Yes, one in a hundred people or the fake plants may tell you that they've had massive success by following the practices and teachings of this particular guru. But Most people don't. The vast majority of people don't see any success. Or if they do see success, it's a lot harder than what was portrayed. And the results often nowhere near as significant. See, here's the thing. Most of the information, if not all the information that's taught in those courses is available for free. It is. And it's not just on the podcast here, although we're doing our very best to give you as much as possible. It's not just through our YouTube courses, Rob's books, the magazine. There's other people who are very generous with their time and knowledge as well who will help you for free. If you go along to networking meetings, again, meetings where there isn't a sales agenda, and speak to other investors and landlords, the amount of people that will give you guidance and advice is phenomenal. And guess what? They'll do it for free because people like to share their knowledge and I think most of all Rob all of that said the best education by far way better than the podcast way better than your books and anything else we do is actually starting to invest definitely we've said it before but it's when you start doing it that the real learning starts I've experienced the same thing you do all this reading and all this learning you feel like you know a subject really well but it's only when you actually start doing it that you really grasp it that you learn the real lessons that you learn all the ins and outs and the little details that you need to be successful now that doesn't mean that you should just rush in and buy a property without having done any research at all of course not but there are enough free and very cheap resources that you can use to get your knowledge up to a reasonable point point then you can buy a property then the experience that you have going through the process of buying that property and letting it out or doing whatever you do that will then give you the real base of knowledge that you need to move on from there you could spend 30 grand on a course or some expensive mentoring it sounds crazy if you've never been in this world before but i know that there are courses out there that cost that much you could do that and you would learn something But you will learn so much more if you take that 30 grand and use it as a deposit on a property. You'll come out knowing more, you'll come out with more confidence, and you'll actually have an asset rather than just having put money in someone else's pocket. So a huge thanks to Mike on two levels. One, for coming onto the podcast, because we are trying to get this message out as far and wide as possible. And the way Mike is doing it is incredible. But actually, thank you for him for doing this. Like, What a beautiful position to be in that because he is actually financially free. He can go and do this. And it's kind of ironic that he's put himself in a position of financial freedom through hard work and graft and a bit of luck and then spending his funds on courses that promise the financial freedom through quick wins and a secret system. I think Mike's going to see a lot of success from this because 
this has been a long time coming. As we said, his first video is the video we wish we'd made. But I think Mike's dangerous because he's got very little to lose. I think a lot of these gurus are going to be running scared. Well done, Mike. Just before we head off, we've got time for Hub Extra, that part of the show where we give you an extra resource, video, book tip, something to send you away with to improve the rest of your week. And this week, we've got just a little bit more love for Mike Winnett because his latest video is absolutely phenomenal. And basically, Rob, he's made the anti-marketing video for a big event that's happening in November. Yeah, so if you want to see some of these gurus in action, then head along to the National Achievers Conference in Birmingham on the 19th and 20th of November. But please, please don't go. And if you do go, please don't take credit cards. So these are actually not the best of these entrepreneurs in action. So there's a few headliners there. Not all are entrepreneurs, the headliners, as Mike would call them. And what they will do is they will pitch you and pitch you and pitch you all their courses, tell you how you can change your life by investing in their products. If you want to see what Mike's talked about in action, then head along. Tickets are, are quite cheap, but please don't go with thinking you're going to change your life. What they do is they pay for headliners to attract people in. And this time around, they've got Gary V and Russell Brand. And then what they'll do is then stuff the rest of the weekend full of these people who are going to sell you products and courses. And that's how they make their money. I'm not going to say too much more, but Mike delivers this in a very entertaining way, which you can find by searching for Mike Winnett. Watch that and subscribe up. And while you're there, you may as well sign up to the Property Hub YouTube channel as well, because we're ramping up the amount of videos we're putting out. So that's also worth subscribing to. So that is us done for this week. Thank you again to Mike for joining us. We will be back with another episode of the Property Podcast next Thursday. And before then, with Ask Rob and Rob on Tuesday. So until we see you next, have a fantastic week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.